tell you something. We don't ever really establish kingdom. We got prophets in church, but how come they ain't telling us what to invest in on the stock market? So we don't, the prophet don't function like that. Well, if the prophet don't function like that, why do we come into the church and, and prophesy houses and homes on you? How come the prophet didn't tell us to buy gold at 500? It's almost at 2,000 right now. If we put 20,000 in on gold 10 years ago, where would our money be now? All I'm trying to say is that we're supposed to know what's happening before it happens. The Lord said, before it happens, I tell you. Well, if you hang it with him, how come you don't know? Say, oh, I want to talk to me in this room tonight. I just want to know, how come we don't know nothing if we say we're with all knowing? It is because we're so busy going to school that we ain't hanging with God. God is science. All science is called omniscience. But we, we don't know. We're not in the loop. We don't know. Because, because, because now, in order for us to break through this mockery, we need a breakthrough. Come on, say that. Say, I need a breakthrough. And this is where this is the part where we go deep because because truly we are in a transition yes. and we must articulate the transition if we're going to make a smooth one. Mm -hmm. It's going to be rough if we don't articulate. Right. Right. Yeah. right. This this next move of God is taking us deep. Mm -hmm. It is taking us deep into ourselves. We're not going to see what we want to see mm -hmm. until each and every one of us count up the cost. Oh, we got we to count up. How, how much do we want to pay for this next anointing? And, and can I tell you the price tag on it? Uh, uh, it is all. We're not going to get this next level of anointing if we're not willing to give all. Now, I want to ask you a question. It's rhetorical. I'm not going to ask or re request you to answer it. I'm not going to require you to answer, but I want to ask you a question. When is the last time you praised God with all you had? No, all right. When is the last time you prayed with all that is within you? When, when is the last time you laid before God and you just surrendered all? No, 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 no. See, see when we talk like that, man, you know, we tend to take things lightly. When I said all, I mean everything. Yeah. When's the last time you laid your spouse on the altar, okay. your children on the altar, okay. you, for that matter, on the altar? When's the last time we had an all of him and a none of us experience? I want you to turn with me, if you will, to Chronicles. Would you turn with me to Chronicles? Second Chronicles. Fifth chapter. And I'm going to look at the second verse, and then we're going to go to Second Chronicles, seventh chapter. I want to deal with the glory of God tonight. And and how many of you know that the Ark of God, the Ark of the Covenant, was attached to the resident presence of God? So wherever the Ark went, glory followed. Yeah. You with me? Yeah. Wherever the Ark went, glory followed. Now, because glory is not in this realm, it is important that we talk about it so that we can get where glory is. You with me? Um, we have to preach a way of escape so that we don't stay in this church realm and get left. Yeah. We got to get out of here and get to a realm of glory. And what's deep about glory's location is, <laughs> well, I, I tell you, we'll, we'll, we'll go there. Glory, glory's location is deep. I'll just leave it at that. All right, turn, uh, uh, look at 5 and 2, 5 and 2, uh, 2 Corinthians 5 and 2. Then Solomon assembled the elders of Israel and all the heads of the tribes. Uh, that's 2 Corinthians 5. And I'm so sorry. Chronicles. I meant Chronicles. You guys were there anyways, though, right? Yeah. Okay. okay, thank you. Chronicles. Then, this, and then Solomon assembled the elders of Israel and all the heads of the tribes of the chief and the fathers of the children of Israel unto Jerusalem to bring up the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord out of the city of 
David, which is Zion. Wherefore, all the men of Israel assembled themselves with the king in the feast, which was in the seventh month. And all the elders of Israel came, and the Levites, of all, uh, and they took up the ark, and they brought up the ark, and the tabernacle of the congregation, all the holy vessels that were in the tabernacle. These did the priests and the Levites bring up. Also, King Solomon and all the congregation of Israel that were assembled unto him before the ark sacrificed sheep and oxen, which could not be told for a numbered of multitude. And the priest brought in the ark and the covenant of the Lord into the place, to the oracle of the house, unto the most holy place, even under the wings of the cherubim. For the cherubim spread forth their wings over the place of the ark, and the cherubims covered the ark and the staff thereof above. And they drew out the staffs of the ark, and the ends of the staffs were seen, from, were seen from the ark before the oracle. But they were not seen without, and there it is unto this day. There was nothing in the ark save the two tables with which Moses put therein at Horeb, when the Lord made a covenant with the children of Israel when they came out of Egypt. And it came to pass when the priests were come out of the holy place, for all the priests that were present were sanctified and did not then wait by course. Also the Levites, which were the singers of the of them of which were the singers, all of them, of Asaph, of Heman, he Heman and of Jeduthun, with their sons and brethren. Being arrayed in white linen, having cymbals and psalteries, harps, stood at the east end of the altar, and with them a hundred and twenty priests sounding with trumpets. It came even to pass, as the trumpeters and singers were as one, to make one sound to be heard in the praising and thanking the Lord, that when they lift up their voice with the trumpets, our cymbals and instruments of music, and praised the Lord, saying, For he is good, for his mercy endureth forever, that then the house was filled with a cloud, even the house of the Lord, so that the priest could not stand to minister by reason of the cloud, for the glory of the Lord had filled the house of Israel. I want you to leave there, turn with me to Numbers, the 14th chapter. I'm going to, I'm going to come back to the 7th chapter of 2 Chronicles, but I'm going to look at Numbers 14 and 20 real quickly. Numbers 14 and uh, 20 says, And the Lord said, I have pardoned according to thy word. But as true as I live, all the earth shall be filled with the glory of the Lord. All the earth shall be filled with the glory of the Lord. Now, if you look at Isaiah 6 and 3, and I know you're turning a lot, but just look at it. I'm going to preach in a minute. Isaiah 6 and 3. And I want you to see the difference. He says in Numbers he says the earth, the whole earth shall be filled with the glory of God. But that's not what he says in Isaiah. Isaiah 6 and 1 says in the year that King Isaiah, Isaiah died, I saw the Lord sitting upon the throne, high and lifted up, and his train filled the temple. Above it stood the seraphims. Each one had six wings with twain. He did cover his face with twain. He did cover his feet with twain. He did fly. And one cried unto another and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is filled with his glory. So you see that that before the visitation in, in um, Numbers, he says the whole earth shall be filled with his glory. And then he comes back in Isaiah and says the whole earth is filled with his glory. But in Psalms 8, he gives the location of glory as being above the earth and of the heaven. So how is it that the glory of God is above the earth and above the heaven, but then yet the earth is filled <laughs> with, with the glory of God and when you read Chronicles you see where glory makes you heavy or it comes in and causes you not to be able to do anything because of glory or the presence of God Holy Ghost. So, so the earth is filled with the glory but I don't always see the glory I don't always feel the glory I'm not always involved with the glory but the glory is there which lets me know that I'm not but a millisecond from stepping into glory. I, I need you to see this because glory is in a dimension that I'm not in. And praise is not from here. So when I praise God, it calibrates my spirit. It is synchronizes my mind. It causes me to step over into another dimension. So now when I'm in that dimension, as I sing 
worship and praise the Lord, it's not that I'm in the earth, it's that I'm in the thing that fills the earth. I'm in his glory. I'm in the glory place. I'm in the heavy place. Now watch this. When I cross over into glory, it's different than when I'm not. And I want to define the distinct difference because church is not in glory. Church is in the earth. Watch this. But in order for the whole earth to be filled with the glory, we have to feel it. And a lot of times, you have to be willing to release your praise out of your mouth to fill the house with the glory of God. Why? Because the scripture clearly states that he inhabits the praises of his people. Which means that he habitats. He takes a habitat when you praise God. So when you say hallelujah, thank you Jesus, I love you Lord, and you fill the, the, the room up with the exaltation of God and the majestic worship of God, what happens is you cross over. You don't feel it, but you can hear it. Because you can tell in the midnight hour the thought process. The night before you was thinking about how much you hated so and so. But tonight the earth is filled with his glory and all you can think about is one song after another of singing to God. Have you ever woke up in the morning and a song hit your spirit but you know it didn't come from your mind? Have you ever woke up in the middle of the night and you heard scriptures going through your head but you know it didn't come from the curriculum of what has been taught to your mind? It is because you have stepped away from glory. You have entered into another place and it's a place where I dare you to sing. It's a place where I dare you to give God praise. It's a place where I dare you to lift up your hands without wrapping down. 